Good afternoon everyone. How are we? Good? It is Wednesday. I'm doing my head in. Absolutely doing my head in changing days on you. Probably doing it to you too. Uh, but we're here. We're here. We're here. And Oh, that doesn't look good, does it? Actually, I'm going to put this over here. My little tripod. Because we are um, heading off to Margaret's uh, this week. So we need to do a little bit of filming down there towards the soiree. And, oh, wait, I need to show you something. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, no. I did debate whether to show you this or not. Rob will be watching and he'll go, she hasn't put the mic on. At the last minute, the sun came out and the room increased in temperature by about 10 degrees. So what I had on, I had to change. I couldn't, I couldn't be bothered with miking up again. Um, can you see? This is my Sunday project for the Needle Worker Soiree. And I think, I don't think the other girls, I don't think Karen and Margaret have revealed yet what they're doing but I'm going to because it's a bit exciting uh, this is that is a really uncomplimentary shot isn't it shall we try this one instead let's go here if I hold this down here for you and I'll sit it on I'll sit it on the table runner there we go you see that there this is my Sunday project at the risk of you going, oh, I'm only coming Saturday. We will work out something for people that are only coming one day and they've missed it. That will all happen. But at the moment, we need to focus. I have reasons for doing this on the Sunday. It's all about the work involved, setting up the room, all that sort of stuff. So this is my Sunday project. So, and look, the, the brief, the whole thing about the soiree, was having little things that you could make and sit and chat and not stress over with a little help from us walking around the room. Gorgeous Sue Spargo matching teal wool felt inside for your needles. Um, it has to be easy. You have to not worry about bringing anything but your basic sewing kit. All those things play a part. So that is what I'm putting up for the Sunday. So there you go. Uh, should I do this? I should, shouldn't I? And then, and then the advertorial, because Sunday was all advertorial, ah, is over. So there's the Needleworker Soiree. If you would like to book, go to book on trybooking.com. Trybooking.com. That's that little bit down there. Needleworker Soiree. We, it's, it's filling rather quickly and the time is going rather quickly. So, it's sort of, I've still got, I've still got six weeks, we've all got six weeks, however, when we see all the bookings come in, it kind of makes us speed up. So, that is my little project, and the retail value on all of our kits, so if you're coming on either day, there are three different kits, one from Margaret, Karen and I, the retail value of our kits, we've made sure that they are at least, at least $15 worth of value. Uh, this one here with the cardboard and the pattern and the fabric and the felt and everything going in as well over that. Uh, so you get three. So that's kind of $45 worth and then you get a lovely high tea and a day with the girls. And it's uh, $75 a day. So I'm going to pop this aside. If you've got any questions about the soiree, please, oh my goodness, you're all here. Right. Um, <laughs> uh, please email me at info at chandlerscottage.com but also if you're booking and you have particular people you would like to sit with there is a spot there for you to send us a message through trybooking.com that comes to me uh, it doesn't it's not going to Karen or Marg because Marg's uh, reception's a little bit hit and miss and she's really busy at the moment with some amazing charity work and things she's doing Karen's chuffing off uh, overseas before the soiree to work at Nantes and and do some workshops and things 
So you get me. You just get me. But that's what we're doing. You bring, you email me and you say, I want to sit with, and uh, Cass and I are organising that for you. I'll just pop these over here. I have to be so careful with that sample because I want to take it down and show Margaret uh, this week. So I, um, I shall pack it up and then of course there'll be two or three extra samples made so that on the day we can have one up on the stage on a little sample table and then I can have two or three rotating around the room so that you can uh, have them on your tables or have a look. Good afternoon, Carol, Fiona, Christine, Joan. Hello, Diane. How are you? Of course you're in your jammies because you're in Costa Rica. <laughs> um, good afternoon, Linda. Nan, hello to you. Hi, Louise. I heard you were out and about on the weekend, mate. Just picking on you. Uh, that's so funny because I'm actually uh, going down to Palm Beach quilting myself. Um, early next week, I need a couple of bits from Maury that she has that are, you know, just for me, for my sewing. Just for me. Well, something to make for mum, actually. Um, good afternoon, Bernadette. Bernadette's coming. Good afternoon, Jill. Good afternoon, Cindy. Oh, I missed you the other day, Cindy. Uh, Steve and I said afterwards, oh, Cindy was there and we didn't say hi. Good afternoon to you. Yvonne, hello. Pam's here, super duper, Sharon Keys, uh, love the set. It is Christmas in April, absolutely. You've stolen my line already, Sharon. Um, it's all about, it's kind of Christmas, but you know, I love my red and green with a touch of black and gold. You can't go wrong. And yeah, it's it's Aussie as well. The colours are all very Australian as well, if you think about it. Kathy Ahern, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Marie. And Elizabeth is here, and Lynn's here, and Barbara's here, Cecily's here. Now, I'm looking at your names, and I'm thinking about who we've been communicating with in the last couple of days. Everyone that signed up for Be Mindful to purchase the kit, Steve is in the process of emailing you to talk to you about if you would like to get your background from us. Um, we just decided it was it's a little less personal, but it's a little personal email from us just to kickstart that conversation. Because otherwise we play phone tag with you all the time. And our phones are actually out tomorrow. So there'll be, we won't be answering the phone. We're still working um, with NBN and Optus to try and improve our service line here um, for answering the phones. We've improved it a lot, but we want that, we want a little bit more. So I've relinquished the day. Um, I'm actually going to Margaret's. Steve will be here, but you'll need to communicate by email. Or you can actually ring and leave a message and I'll get back to you on Friday. That's office office meeting done um you know Matt Cecily seat so yes uh and if you want any extra help with your background I'm going to be here for you and I've got some more emails to answer after the show Francis hello Debbie hello Catherine uh Deb we've been very silly on Natasha's show the other day uh some of my UK girls and I Catherine hi Thank you, Diana. Um, it's a work in progress. If you have a look closely, the wreath is not finished, but I wanted to put it up and show you what I'm doing. Sylvia, Carol, hi. Um, you're okay. You're, you're all good. Joan, I know. It is just, it's a bit far for you. It's a bit far for Cindy. It's a bit far for Bob. Good afternoon, Tina. A bit far for Tina. Oh, you could... You drive it in a day, Tina, couldn't you? Yes. Short of missing any floods or anything else on the road. Thank you, Anne. Um, all fantastic. And cannot cannot wait. Rented a house for three nights. Have you really? Have you really? Oh. <laughs> okay, you've taken it up a level, Sylvia. That is sensational. Um, I'll let mine know we're all having breakfast at your place. Nancy Cook, uh, there's a message on my phone from you that only came through at about lunchtime today, so I need to ring you back. Again, phones, need to fix the phones. Um, so you're on there. All right, are we all here? Christine's here, good afternoon. Christine's here on Sunday. Oh, you're coming on the Sunday, super duper. I was thinking, are you coming to my house Sunday because you live around the corner, but no. Yeah, Fiona, but wait till you see Saturday's project. Just wait. It's all good. It's all good. Um, and then we'll, as I said, we'll work out for those coming whether we can offer extra kits either or. We will see how we go. We'll, we'll just have to play it by ear. It's new to us as well. We haven't done this before. 
Um, yes, it would show in keys. Absolutely. All right, Helen's here. Jackie, do, will you please forgive me if you're still saying hello? Thanks, Judy. No, I will confess. Thanks, Judy. I will confess the second, third, and fourth samples of the book may not get blanket stitched by hand. They may actually get done by a machine. Double stitch on my Benina with cotton just because um, I, it's a time thing. It's an absolute time thing. What is going on down there? Can you hold on two ticks? I just want to pop my little fan on so I don't I don't melt on you. And there is this it's just like plug city down here. And there are so many plugs for cameras and irons and phones and machines and and a fan which now needs turning down okay that's it super so I'm sorry about the buzz in the background we'll just leave it on for a little bit all right let's have Fiona you've come in a bit late you're absolutely fine someone just needs to send us um, an email or through try booking an email saying these ladies all want to sit together as long as they're all booked they all need to be booked in before we can group you all together then that's absolutely fine but you need to let us know who you want together um, so that when you arrive we've got a table put aside for you dry ginger ale diet hasn't got any brandy in it okay the set now do you remember last week it was a long time ago wasn't it Last week I was working on the gum leaf panels. They are not together, but they are finished. So that is the front panel. If I show you the back, it's all quilted. And you can see, remember I talked about just following the lines through. So this of course needs to be finished off because I don't want to put the kit up until it's complete. And it would have looked gorgeous to have it done with this, but it's not. So I will have it done, Anna. It'll go in a newsletter. I won't gonna, I'm not going to bore you with that again. So that panel's done. This one's done. And remember last week we sewed on this bit so you had an idea of how it all worked. I'm going to today, uh, walking foot, oh yes, um, is in here. I'm going to assemble these when we hit the machine just because a few people are still saying, I don't get it, I don't understand how there can be a gap at the bottom and you sew across it. So I thought, oh well, I'm at this point, we might as well do it on the show today. Straps done. Again, lining cut out, ready to go. But we could, we could actually do the lining pieces, couldn't we? We'll see how we go. So that's going together and then that kit will go up as well as the power one that we've already got up. So show and tell. Now, the Liberty bags that we were working on last week with all the strips and the paper piecing and everything, these things take time. I did not, we did not, kind of with a stiff drink expect the response to the be mindful quilt um, club kits podia and everything so I will be honest we probably lost well we didn't lose we had to dedicate a day unexpectedly to making sure we had enough fabric for everyone we are just there at the moment we are sort of just staying ahead of the demand for the kits and for the background fabric Steve's uh, at his place today and he is literally emailing people, finding out what they want, taking it off the stock we've got that we know is coming in and everything. So we did lose a little bit of time. It is not lost. It will be finished. And in fact, I'm taking the English paper piecing to sew onto the panels with me to Mark's. And I will have that back here for you next week. I absolutely need to get it finished myself anyway. So um, it's not lost in the abyss of my office. It will be finished next week so I can bring it back bring it back and show you. Um, but yeah, I know a lot of people are doing uh, a lot of work with their treasure tote frames and that is fantastic. And I've seen some gorgeous, who is it? Amy Nichols sent me a photo um, of her panels going in. They're amazing, absolutely amazing. So please keep working on them. I'll keep working on mine and we'll come back with that next week. There's a truck load, I'm not into truck loads. No, it was two trucks that came with two big deliveries. We've got beautiful, beautiful new fabrics additional to these out there for Sunday show and also for Tuesday show. So we'll talk a bit more about that um, a little bit later. So that's my... Don't forget with the gum leaf tote, if you don't want a kit, you can just download the pattern and get started. You don't need me. 
you don't need me to send it to you it's all there for you so what we're going to what we're going to have a look at today we we had this last year and this is the confessions of the confessions of the uh, I hate the word time poor but there we go um, it's it's all are you all good Jackie says she's lost contact I haven't lost contact Jack we're all here I promise so um what what we did we did this last year and I have to confess I think we ran really, really short on time. It was before we had the new website. It was when we were doing those mad live shows where you were ordering in the comments section. It was it, it was like trying to negotiate landing on the moon, doing it like that. It really was. So we had it then, but when we launched the new website, it never went up. And sometimes I go, that's really weird. You know, we, no one's actually ever bought that. Um, that last 3D flower fun kit uh, in, in this colorway because it's not on the website. So there was a bit of a run around. So you will now find the digital download pattern for this guy up on my website. Uh, I'll give you an overhead because he's not hanging up. I could probably, I could probably ball clip him actually over the, uh, over the wreath. But I just want to show you how this goes together. This it, this is not, not a super new pattern for me, but it's always sort of been a specialised pattern. I did a road show for uh, Hobby, Hobby So in New South Wales and did one of those. I did the tour. I did the tour, folks. It was like six Hobby, toes, Hobby So shops in six days. It was insane. They had me running around uh, teaching it twice a day. I was quite nutty when I'd finished, with the driving in between as well, down to Wollongong, fig tree, the whole bit. This is what we're going to do today, is just see this, how this all goes together. But see these guys? And I love this. Mine is super flat suit still. Well, you know I love 3D. But you can, you can do this. You know, you can push them up a little bit. Just up like that. So, you know, they're a little bit more 3D. This spot here is just, it's begging it's absolutely begging um for a tea candle a little bunch of flowers um it's it's easter little bowl of pink and gold uh lint easter eggs in there for sure so i really i really really like it it's sort of got a bit of a poinsettia look to it but on the pink and teal it looks pretty it looks pretty spiffy too. It's very spring. So this I'm going to finish. You can see I've got the binding on. I'll confess it never got finished. So the one, the picture, that's on the pattern, that was the confession. The picture on the pattern is um, it flat without being quilted and Cass may or may not have photoshopped on the binding for me. But it is now quilted because Tim came round well, it gave me the incentive. I had to really tidy up. Tim came around and serviced my Q20. And I whizzed around on that and had it done, quilted, you know, on the machine in like half an hour. And you go, how did I not make time to do that in the last six months? So we've got one kit here. The reason I can't do any more at the moment is we are out of uh, ivory flowering gum. FedEx are air freighting in my samples from the next production run at the moment which has got the new black in it as well, and the ivory green uh, multi-red. So the ones that we're out of are coming in. Once we've got this ivory, we will be doing this as a kit again. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to ball clip this over. But we're going to make one of the blocks, but not in pink. I'll just pop that up there. Now the wreath also got archived when things got really messy and busy and... Um, probably just on pre-COVID. Really, it's been that long. And previous to that, it was a project in a quilter's companion magazine. So if it's familiar to do to you, it was in pink and teal, way, way back at the start of Under the Australian Sun. But I really wanted it in the red. So the gum, the gum flowers that we played with last week with the free motion stitching in the gold, same technique. So I've got my lightweight adhesive uh, stabilizer on the back. Still, I think, or I might have pulled it off. Oh, there it is. You can see it's on the back. I popped it in the hoop the same way that we did last week. So in the hoop. 
and um, I'm working my way around. So not not all of the gum nuts, oh, you can't see the bottom, sorry, not all of the gum nuts actually have um, the flowers on them. Some are just left as gum nuts and I'm going to work around and finish those off. So this will be up as a, no, we don't digital download this one because there are A3 sheets in the pattern, that's right. So this will be available as a printed pattern as soon as I've finished it. Um, and there will be a special offer on that pattern for everyone in A Quilter's Life, in our online club, because uh, digitally it's too hard for you to print out. You would end up with 16 A4 sheets to sticky tape together. So it's much easier if we print it high quality for you, but there will be a deal for A Quilter's Life girls. And of course, we'll. We'll do a startup demo for it, uh, like we did with the pansies this week. So M, M actually appliqued on the leaves for me on this one. I didn't pop the leaves on, and she used a hemming stitch instead of a blanket stitch. So it's a really interesting, different effect. It looks really, really good. So we will come back to that as soon as I've finished it. But I couldn't, I couldn't leave it off the set today with all the colours. That looks absolutely terrible with that pink up. If I stand come over here and hide it, we might be all right. Oh, Sylvia, have you? Oh, that is fantastic. I have it on my table at the moment. Oh, excellent. Thanks, Kath. I'm really pleased. Good, good, good. I could finish. Sharon, absolutely, you could. You could. And Jackie's back. We missed you. I'm sorry, that's rude, isn't it? All right, so I'm going to make this as the next kit and version of it, which is kind of for me, in this, in this. So it's going to sort of be my, may I use the word sexy? May I, please? Don't think I've ever used it before. M might have. Table runner. A sexy Christmas table runner. But it, in, in, in my house, we have a red couch, so it goes it goes with everything else in the dining room lounge all right so i'm going to use these these are again uh we had a little sneak peek didn't we on sunday just did a couple this is chung again she's just thumping out some amazing designs at the moment i there's a level of admiration and jealousy and spite all, all in one for me because uh, i just can't keep up with her she is prolific but she only designs she doesn't actually have to print it and run the house and a website and everything else. So I just kind of, Lisa, if she's lucky, gets out two collections a year. And Chung's whipping them out, you know, five a season. But she's really good. And her, her styling combined with Timeless Treasures and the high quality factory that they also print in is a lovely thing. Shall we do the main one first? This is the main one. And um, where shall we do this? Will I just do this? We'll just hold it up to start with. Beautiful paisley. So again, we, we had a little bit of a chat about this on Sunday. It is a really incredible range in that not all of the colour palette on the selvage match up like I do, because I'm too chicken to do it any other way. She can tweak a collection that it has different reds and greens in it, but they still all go together. It's very, very clever. Um, I've got so much stuff on the counter. Let's just move the ironing board for a tick. Just move that. Good afternoon, Sue Singer. Good afternoon, Irene. Nola, hello to you, Judy, uh, here. Um, Devin's in as well. Oh my goodness. It's, it's, it's super. If you have just joined Quilter's Life, please go back and have a look at the post because last month was used by month. And I'm just about to talk to the girls uh, on the weekend. April is apparel month. Nothing to do with quilting. It's about being a quilter and the life that surrounds around you as well as demos and things. Oh, well, you've got row of pansies up too. Did you know that? Just have a look. Row of pansies demos up. Um, it's apparel month. Yes, it's wardrobe month. Uh, and wardrobe, the way a quilter organises their wardrobe. There you go. See, that isn't that great. So what we were talking about the other day was Anna Fiskin, who used to, remember Red Rooster Fabrics? They used to do a lot of really nice Orientals. They got amalgamated into, 
Oh, I can't remember. Andover or Windermore, one of the others. Anyway, Anna was their head designer. She always put a touch of red pink. So, I need to sit something under this so it doesn't fall down. We'll put the pegs under like that. Okay, so that's going to sit there. See this? It is like a full-on coral pink, if I call that anafiscan red, in with the dark red. And this is gorgeous sagey green, and then there's this lovely minty yellowy green. So, I promised I would go looking, and this is what I found. Obviously, I don't have a lot of fluoro pink. Gee, you know what? I didn't look. I've probably got one out in the solids collection, haven't I? I will chase that up and let you know. But this, guys, look, I haven't got much left, but I've tagged it, Robert Kaufman and Pura. See that full-on coral? Just that, it's the pop, it's the pop colour in the fabric. So there's that one. Um, we had, I don't know, Steve probably knows how many, I don't know. I just know that there were two huge boxes of them, of ombres arrived, and we will be talking ombres on Sunday. Sunday ombres are in with that tote I was doing with the flowers, my tote with the flowers on it that had been ruched. Ombre, I've got that particular colour back in and we're going to talk with those with a few other things on Sunday with a gorgeous new range, another new range as well. See, this is good. I like this because when you get up to this orange here, it's heading into that orangey pinky colour. Um, so this is Gelato, Gelato Ombre in R. I always like to show you the gelatos now because I know a lot of you are into them. This is Robert Kaufman Fusions Reach. Oh, I haven't tagged this. I do apologise. Let me tell you what it is. My bad. It's cream. If you put infusions, Regent, it will bring them all up and this is cream. You can see it's a soft goldy cream and it pulls up the light colours in the paisley. I'm really sorry girls, I should have tagged that. I'm using it for the centre on my table runner. Now, here's the wild card. It's mint. Gum flowers. Or pear, sorry. So I've tagged that. And look, it works. Because it's halfway between this minty green colour here and the darker sage one. Who would have thought? But it actually works. So, you know, I like to show you what goes because um, you may be in, I don't know, Yeovil, um, Black Bart, Black Hall, I don't know, where, wherever you are, Alice Springs, all that. I'm going to show you the other, the other wow wow. Screams bags. Oh, Judy, I promised to get the cherry out, didn't I? It does go with the cherry cork. It does. If you're a cork fan, our black, just put in cork in the search window, you will find them all. The cherry cork and the black cork with the metallic on. Beautiful. There you go. So you can imagine, you put your cork along the bottom of your tote and then you, mm, you have your stripe. It is just beautiful. And it's got all of the colours that are in the other fabrics. That with gold. Yum, yum. When you see, I have done a fat quarter pack. When you see the fat quarter pack, you won't see, because they're sort of, they're folded that way, you won't be able to see, I think, the black in the photo. I did do it really quickly, like 15 minutes before the show. So it is the same fabric. You may not just be able to see all of the colours. I think the photo sort of got taken about there, so you can't see the black either side. Now, you've also got gorgeous marble in green. You've got gorgeous marble in red. That's pretty good, isn't it? They're just beautiful. And the reds, of course, they all match. We haven't we haven't had a good marble. Oh, I've put them back in the wrong spot. We haven't had a good marble for ages. Heads up. If you put bubble into the search window, you're going to come up with our bubble paisleys, remember? That green is a dead set match. Absolute dead set match. So we look, look, look. Apple green. I think I've been negligent. Stephen, if you're watching, can you tag that bubble green for me? Because I didn't do it. Got a bit got a bit stressed at the last minute. I was organised, you know, an hour out, and then things just happen. 
like the pattern for today not actually being on the website. Look at the leaves. Stunning. Stunning, stunning. Uh -huh. uh, it, it may look black on your screen, but it doesn't actually go down to black. It goes down to the darkest of green. Okay, so if you want to take it and have it as an all-over amazing blender in your stash to go with everything, I'll just show you this here. So that's dark green through to a pale one and the gold, but there's no black. So it will go with everything well beyond um, this range. So that one's really lovely. And we've got a little geometric. How cute. Oh, I'm upside down. Well, I think we're upside down. How cute's that? So if you were, for example, going to do some paper piecing, perhaps, with this collection, um, I just see Dresden wedges all day long with that. Just Dresden wedges. Or stars, our eight-pointed stars in EPP papers. That would be really good fun. Very nice. Now, that's my, that's my kit. All right, there's two more in this range. Swirly Wells. I mean, that's just good stock standard. As I said the other day, I'm planning, um, I do have a note out there to check on our um, deluxe Fat Eighth packs in the black and gold that we always do. When we run out, we'll be, I need to, I think we nearly run out, so this will go into the next story in that. And then there's a beautiful red. Now, if you were going to class today as a April Christmas day, then this fabric is it and I'd be stashing this for Christmas because it's just gorgeous. Just lovely. And I've got some other ones that we already had in stock that I'm going to show you that go with all of these. Um, some of them I've actually, I may have, I may have marked them down a little bit, some of them. So I would encourage you to have a look. Particularly, you know, particularly if you grab this and you want a good red that goes with it. I've got one over here. This is the fat, this is your fat quarter pack. So that's all the ones I've just shown you. I've put up um, some, not a lot. Uh, it's always a gamble to pre-cut. So I've popped, I've popped some of those up. I've taken a little smidge off. You know, I always like to go the other way. Instead of making it a premium for making me cut them, I go the other way. So it's a little bit off about the price. So that's, you know, it is, it is a lovely stash and I would love to think I had um, the time and the inkling to go, that is my Christmas and here are my decorations or here's my decorations and it's going to go with my table runner and make that decision now, not on the 30th of November <laughs> when we usually do it. I'll pop those back up. At least I've got the red pot. I've got the pot. The pot is ready to go. If I don't kill it between now and now and December, I've got the pot. All right, so this this is going to be my kit to uh, or to make my sample up and my table runner of the three D. Um, can you? You probably can't see that well over here. I'll just pull these down. I've tagged other things that go with this collection because it is. It, I know it's really really hard with greens uh, and reds and. It is a really quite particular, gorgeous, bright apple green. And even I was walking around going, oh yeah, that'll go, that'll go. And I was quite surprised. It is so fresh that a lot of other greens, like the Robert Kaufman um, metallic fusions in leaf that we use a lot with my fabrics and things, no. It was a little bit too dark and a little bit too, it looked dirty up against them. So I had to be, I really went on a bit of a hunt. Um, we've got, and again I've marked these, so if you click on the banner at the top of the page, which is dark red today, it will bring up all these other ones that we went and found for you to have a look at. So that was the beautiful circle, remember that? That's all I've got, there's not much left in the circles. Um, it's not The green does not go, but even if it did you couldn't have it because it's um, being kitted up for the geisha, so we'll pop that over here, pop that there. Um, my gum leaves do go, so if you want to put these together, it's a win-win. Um, and then I went looking for everything that we had red. 
And I forgot, we still have red flannel flowers. This is the last ever, ever bolt. I think there's about, I don't know, five metres left. So I thought, well, I better tell the girls that at the same time. It, it, see that? See, it's orangey bright red compared to these. But it was red, and it's the last bolt, so I marked it. Um, we've got our gorgeous little pin dots. Remember we had these before Christmas? They are still here, because we had lots of it before Christmas. Um, it's a gorgeous little red, so that goes, and that's on special, because it needs to leave the building. Hampton Stripe goes. So if you don't want to do the dark, but you would like to match up with the green marble or the red marble, you're in luck. They go. Same goes for the red. So my red flannel flowers, red flannel flowers don't go, but the red on um, the gum leaves is much darker, so it's okay. Then this is the red that I've popped on special for today that I'm also going to use in my table runner for some of my petals. So this is Shadow Play R55. And it is a lovely red that complements very nicely. So that one's up. And also, um, Quilter's Linen. Particularly Quilter's Linen, and I don't know if you can see it here, it's got, it is red with a paler red. And where the, it goes to a paler red, I don't think you can, it, or just, because there's so much shine going on, it goes to a pinky red. Oh, I will just show you the selvage, that would make sense, wouldn't it? Let's find it. No, you're not going to pick it off there either. There is a shaded out red and then a darker red. But it, it lends itself really well to the side of being a pinky red on the paler little strips in the design. So it works really well with the paisley. So you can have a lot of geometric things um, going on. I did something at the veggie patch. I can feel it done something, I've pulled something. I was pulling um, potatoes and spring onions, but I've pulled something else unintentionally. Has so everyone else got the problem their spring onions have gone woody now? Can we just have a bit of a vegetable garden chat? Mine have gone woody. So I'm going to stick them, I'm going to stick them in the uh, dehydrator and dry them off so we can use them for seasoning and, you know, soups and stuff for winter. That's, um, yes. That is the plan. Sorry, that was a little bit of quarter's life sideline there. Sorry about that. I'm going to need some of that red. So this, it's all about being organized. And I think, you know, we, we do autumn, don't we? We do do autumn and we love it. But let's think, if you think Australian autumn uh, as opposed to European autumn, I'm, I'm kind of more comfortable sitting here. I'll go this way or I'll go into the real um, teal blue gummy uh, rust colours for autumn. So yes, very happy we're going to do this. So what I have done, I've cut my stash for my kit so that we're good to go. Hello Sue McConchie, how are you today? I've seen you slipped in there, very nice. Um, this is my little stash here and I need to add some of this red in. So we'll move these out of the way. And I think what I did, I set this up so this is kind of a better view for you, I think. We'll see how we go. Alright, so when you when you grab your pattern, uh, which you can download, and you can see I haven't wasted my ink. I've printed it in black and white. Two reasons. One, it's saving ink. But also, if I've got it in black and white, I can do this. I can come through and draw on it. So this is my paisley and if I've got my coloured pencils or my textures out I can actually come and draw over the top in different colours so I can see you know exactly what it's going to look like. My under petals are going to be um, my shadow play so that's going to be red and my petals that sit over the top where I had the flowering gum on the pink one these are going to be my stripe just to be out there. So that gives me all of that and my background instead of the ivory flowering gum is going to be the black swirl. So completely different, absolutely completely different. And as I said, you know, you don't need half a meter of all of the fabrics. So I will get a kit together for you as soon as I've made mine up and checked it all out. 
Um, hello Joy, so we'll do that, but in the meantime, you know, if you decided that you really, really wanted this and you think you've got stuff in your stash that might go, you need half a metre of this. Uh, but if you print your download pattern, you've got, you've got all the information that you need to start straight off. So I like to draw what goes where on the front first, and then I can copy that over onto the next page, which has actually got the requirements list. So uh, it lists everything in there for you. It will also tell you how much you need for the binding and also for the backing and the batting and the pattern. Oh, I love them. NBN. you got to love it, don't you? It's doing weird things. All right, so we... Um, right, cutting instructions. I'm actually going to cut it in front of you. Now, the important thing about this particular project is you have to have faith the measurements are right because when you look at this, can you see this over here? See how small that little square is in the middle? But uh, I've actually noted it on the pattern. Um, you need 15 two and a half inch squares, and you go, oh, that must be this in here. Mm -mm. It's actually used in other spots. The flower block background. Hang on a minute, I've got to go through this. Flower centre and flower outer setting. Note, you can only see the fabric in the centre of the finished blocks. The rest sits under the petals. Oh, that's right. Sorry, my bad, my bad. It's under here. So you, you don't see it. You only see this bit on the top, but you actually use it under the petals as well. I might pull it down because I need to be able to show this to you so that I know you get... get oh, don't get my drift. Okay. So we can see this. And we need to cut, though, 15 of them, but you can only see three. And the reason is the others all get used on the three blocks, see, underneath there's little, there's little uh, cut-off triangles. So they're in here. And also there's other little bits and pieces going on underneath, okay? So have faith, it's right. It is right. I'll fold that. I'll just sit it on the sewing machine for now, I think. All right. So I'm going to cut five of these because I want to get started. I want to just show you how the blocks come together. It's going to be a little bit like if you have done the, oh, what's an example? If you've done the pin tuck patchwork bag, once you've got the hang of it, it makes sense and you can go off and use it for lots of other things. And then instead of putting pin tucks in, if you've done the pin tuck patchwork bag, you could put 3D leaves in. You could put anything into those foundation piece strips. So this is a lot like that project because once you understand how it all comes together, you can go off and do whatever you like with it. You really, really can. All right, two and a half. I can't remember the last time I cut and pieced a block with you on Facebook. We have been off in applique. In fact, it really should be April is April applique month. But um, we need to get back. We need to get back to some piecing, girls. Absolutely back to piecing. Uh, there's a lot coming up. I keep saying that to you, don't I? But truly, woolly, there is. And I'm quite. I'm very excited about what what in the trade we would call the peak quilting season. So if you own a shop. You get a bit excited when the weather turns cold because you know everyone's going to be in buying things to do at home um, over winter when they're not out in the garden, when there's long nights, they're not outside, you know, barbecues and all those sorts of things. With COVID, that kind of all went out the window. We were all home all the time, no matter what. But this year, I think we can sort of, we can sort of feel that... Oh, I have been outside a little bit. There's five. We have been outside a little bit, and um, I'm probably not going to be outside as much coming up because it's going to get colder. Daylight savings gone for all of us that had it. There's my five, so I'm going to tick them off. I know I'm not doing all of them, but I want to tick that I've actually done that bit for you. Now we've got some little sashing pieces to cut, okay? I'm going to cut mine off this little bit that I've got left over, but if you were doing all three blocks at the same time, you would probably cut a fresh cut from your piece. So I need two. 
they're little pieces. So I would definitely recommend putting a new blade in your retro cutter before you start. Gee, I'm glad I had lunch because I'm <laughs> doing little dimensions and I'm also recalculating it down to one block at a time instead of um, six, I only need two instead of the three. But us girls can do many, many things all at the one time, can't we? For my lovely ladies watching from the UK who are Natasha girls, I have a meeting. Good afternoon, Judy. Um, lovely to see you. It is, um, I've got a meeting with Natasha this afternoon after the show to talk about my fabrics and getting them into Natasha. So um, that's a bit exciting. That's, so you know what I'll be doing later on. Right, your block background fabric. You need three strips that are three and a half by four. Sorry, I need two strips for this block that are three and a half by four and a half. That's our black over here. Let's sit those up there carefully. If I get this right while talking to you at the same time, we all know it's going to be an absolute sheer miracle, don't we? Okay. Our next dimensions of strips that come off our background. So on the pink one, this is the ivory. Okay, so we're sort of we're we're doing a bit of a mess around, aren't we? We're going light, dark, dark, light. They are three and a half, and it works really well for me because I can set that aside. I think I might I think I might bind in black. It'll be a decision to be made, won't it? And we'll cut this way. So I need four and a half. And if you are watching at home and you are making it at the same time that you're watching this because I will pop it up on YouTube, please, please just be really, really careful because I'm left-handed. So I don't, I don't want you to end up in the point where you're doing this. If you are right-handed, you will have your ruler under your left hand and your rotary cutter on this side. No, no crossy over, as M would say. Don't they look big and fat? It always freaks me out. Right, ten and a half. There we go. So these pieces here are these big pieces here that go around the outside. All right, they go whoosh, around there like that. Now, now we're on to the inner border fabric. So I've chosen to do mine in the green. In this gorgeous thing look look at it I have to show you something but promise 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 you'll accept it's not up on the website yet hang on I gotta get it because <laughs> I need to see if it goes it wasn't, it wasn't red. I couldn't put it on the stand. Um, and I said to Steve, don't put that up yet. It's for Sunday. <gasps> so it will go up before Sunday. But I just wanted to see. Oh, just, just. I put another one that goes with it. Talk about naughty. Does that go? No. I'll find it. I will find it before, um, I'll find it before Sunday show. So if you know anyone that loves camellias, start planning because I'll get Steve to put it up. I just want to see if the green went. All right, here we go. So for our inner border, I need. It's like any. This is this is like any sashing. Once those petals are set into the middle, you are good, good to go. After that, it was just really. Well, really, like any other block. I think I'll need two of these. What happened then? I must have a blunt. Must have a blunt rotary cutter. There was a lot of cutting going on in the shop yesterday. It is. I can hear it. If I can hear it, it's blunt. A little bit like my needle in my machine. Okay. Mm. 
do as I say, not as I do. When you're doing these little cross cuts, make sure you've got your creative grids ruler handy so it doesn't slip and slide around on you. A lot of <laughs> it was a bit it was a little bit crowded yesterday. I sort of looked at my studio half an hour before Tim got here and went, Oh my god, it's just disgusting. So I did a bit of a run around, there was vacuuming. Um, because yeah, I know. I've known him oh, forever, but still, I didn't want him to think I always sewed like that. But I had a big clean up and then everything got packed away that should have come in here for today. Right, there we go. So I've got two pieces, too long and too short, and they are going to be my inner sashing that goes around here. So if I bring you back to the block, that's this piece that goes around see this here we've got little cut off triangles to do as well so with my leftovers um, well obviously we will have a lot a lot a lot a lot more cut later on but I just need to come back and cut four one and a half inch teeny weeny pieces to do those little cut off corners I promise I'm dropping them in the bin underneath not to straight to the floor okay so they're all good ready to go now what are we up to now the big triangle pieces I will actually come back and do those later when I'm putting the whole kit together essentially what happens with the with these big triangles here you actually cut one big uh, one big I'm trying to say, one big square and you cut it diagonally twice and that gives you your four uh, half triangles that make that up. Okay, so you can get that done easily yourself to set them in. The main bit for me is to show you how the petals actually work. So I'll just set these across to the side and then we need to make up our petals. And it is my stock standard method that we use uh, for doing 3D petals. But this time we're not going to gather them, we're actually going to leave them, leave their openings flat at the bottom. So I've got a little bit here of uh, a little scrap, if you like, of template plastic. I did pop it today uh, under the banner as probably our Chewy Checkout product of, of the week. Just, you know, every now and then, I hate it, don't you, when you go, oh. I didn't, I didn't get the template plastic and it probably wouldn't have cost any more in the postage to pop it in. So I did pop it in. Also because I'm not packing orders tomorrow. Steve is. And he is the king. He is the king of uh, packing things with cardboard. He really is so that it arrives in perfect condition at your end. In the pattern you've got a template and this is where you can really decide what you want your petals to look like. You can change them up if you've done any of my 3D stuff, the Oriental Baltimore, the, the, the applique sample, any, anything like that. You can change it around. So this is the, that's the template there. But of course you could make them narrower. Uh, you might even like to get really carried away and double up. So you might like to put a smaller one over the top, get some contrast going on. Minor plane, you might decide that before you actually piece them all into the blocks that you'll come through and add some hand stem stitch or some machine triple stitch in so that your so your petals have got some dimension with some stamens and some veins and things happening on them. You can bead them. Anything. Anything. So as I said, once you've got the pattern, you can have a really, really good play. Paper scissors, we'll cut out our template. Uh, yes, so this week, Steve will be here tomorrow and Friday. Um, yeah, and just leave us a message tomorrow and we will check in with you and email you and then we can email you back as well if you email. So that's all fine. And then um, I'll be back Friday. I'm going to Margaret's to talk soiree business. Uh, also to look at doing, going back and doing craft and cook shows for YouTube uh, and starting at her place. So we've got lots and lots on this week. 
there's also a lot of other things that Margaret and I have been working on together and we just we got together towards the end of oh, last year and then in January and we sort of go off and work on things and this is not for things for now this is for things literally for next year moving on to next year so I'm, I've got to fit that in this week I've got my corner blocks for my applique sample pack to finish off and I'm going to, uh, when my hands don't work anymore, I'm taking some of my um, Be Mindful patterns with me so I can get them all prepped up for the girls that are doing it on Podia with me, the club, so I can start getting ready to do those demonstration uh, videos for you as well. All right, so this is my petal. Now, if I measure this guy, I just want to see. Yeah, so he's three inches tall. So that gives you an idea of the, of the scale of it. And then... I shall read the pattern. I'm not going to make it up because invariably we do that and we get it wrong. Okay, we want a strip that is eight inches wide for each for each of our petal fabrics. So I'll trim this up. Good afternoon, Tara and Leone. Hello, Jude. You're in the building. Uh, how are you today? Hello, Mouse. Good to see you. Um, Donna's here as well. Oh, wonderful. So, 16 down to 8. There we are. So this whole piece will do all of the, all of the petals in this colour. And I'll need 12 all together. And then there will also be a set in the red. Now, I'm working on a really small space here, so you'll have to forgive me. I need to do the, you know, the naughty thing, which is to cut a chunk off my cutting board. I've got the small one on. It's not the height of the fabric. So we'll just take that piece off. And we'll fold this one and do the same. Ha! <laughs> I've just realised. Ha, ha, ha. I don't have red thread in the machine. Oops. Never mind. Um, I can live with it, but I want you to please, if you do this kit, you really do want any time you do 3D work to to try for a close or matching thread because the seam sits right up on the edge of the petals, so it can be it can be seen. In. Right, so there's my two pieces and then what we're going to do is fold each of the pieces in half right sides together and we're going to iron them because we want them nice and flat so that we can draw the template onto one side so we'll pop these up for those that have done the applique sample you're going to be looking at this going they're huge because <laughs> I've made you do some really small ones lately and you've got some uh, small petals coming up that you can do 3D or Island Campbell site style with a satin stitch edge for one of the last couple of blocks in the applique sampler. Um, and the girls, a lot of the girls are caught up and you know and they're waiting for me. I try and do half an hour to an hour a day on the applique sampler. It's like a little thing. I have to make sure that I'm working on it all the time. And then um, next week with uh, Easter, it will be finished. Go. There we are. That's, oh, did you hear that? V that was Uber Eats saying, would I like dinner? No, dinner is ready. Okay, so there's that one. And then I'll just grab this. So you can see what I've, what's happened is because the orientation of the stripe, because it runs lengthways down the bolt, um, when I've cut it, my stripes are going to end up this way on my pedal. So if you do decide to fussy cut or run with a directional print, just always think about that before you get started to make sure that you've got them running in the right direction. If they if you wanted them to go, wanted them to go the other way you would cut yourself down smaller pieces and rotate the fabric to to create the effect that you're after it's not hard and you would not uh, you wouldn't need any more fabric so instead of having them all in one strip 
I would recommend that you'd be cutting down to um, sort of four by eight, uh, three and a half by eight inch rectangles and just folding those over and doing your petals individually just to, just to switch around the orientation of the print. I mean, I do love the idea, again, if you are a machine embroiderer, of having some beautiful little scrawly pattern that you could stitch onto each of the petals. It would be, just be stunning. In gold, plain ones with gold would be really nice. Right, so I've ironed both of those. And now what we can do is come back down. This is plenty, absolutely plenty for me to do all of my 12 petals, but I'm just going to do four of each for today so that I can show you what it looks like. I know I brought in it. Here it is. So I've just grabbed a Frixion pen. I'm not, uh, I'm not, gonna, not going to worry about where the pattern falls. So I could be really particular and say, I just want the red or I just want the black. I'm not going to do it. Um, I'm just just going to let it fall and I can always um, arrange my petals across all of the four blocks if I wanted to later on. Okay. So you can see you can run with a directional print, stripes, the Hampton stripe would look very fun as well. Or you can run with a tonal print like the flowering gum one I did. Uh, I'll just do four for now, okay, because I only need four. So I'll chop that off and pop it up there. And we'll come back, I'll come back and make those later. Right, with these petals, who's doing what kangaroo paws? Oh, they're doing their kangaroo. Thing. I didn't put a kangaroo in the print. Are you, Jeanette? Excellent. I'm glad to hear that. Um, I did not put in my petals any extra padding or any extra stabilizer. However, you could, you absolutely could, maybe some um, whisper weft or some violin just to give them a little bit of grunt. If you really want nice stiff petals, that if you uh, push them up a little bit and adhere them with a bead, they're really going to sit up nice and mounded on the table runner then you could do that as well. I'm going to tell you one other thing because it would be a crime not to, as Nat would say. Um, when I teach 3D work and things, I will always at some point stop and say, for that extra little bit of bling, in between these two pieces, a piece of sheer organza. So that when they are all sewn together and you turn them out the right way, there will be the red underneath and a layer of sheer organza or something over the top. Always keep that in mind, particularly if you're making your own fascinators or hat embellishments or anything like that, all right? So keep that in mind. Okay, they are ready for me to sew and go to the sewing machine. So um, we'll do that. You know what I'm missing? Come on, you can do it. You know what I'm missing? They're not in here. Come on, 3D girls, you know what's missing. The forceps. <laughs> Shall we sew these first and then I'll go and get them? The forceps are missing. We can't do it without them. Would it be wrong? Okay, sewing machine. Now, there's been lots and lots and lots and lots of discussion again in the last couple of weeks with the who's who, <sighs> which is um, Marie Waters, Eileen Campbell, oh, the who's who. Yeah, the girls about I'm putting on my number 20 foot okay I'm on a, a dual feed machine today I'm on a 570 Bonina there we go and then I'll engage my oh sorry engage my dual feed lots and lots of discussion about 9 mil versus 5 mil different things that you do with the machines um, now in my life I have my my two iconic besties that I look up to now have different machines and it's all about the different work that they do. So Marie is staying with a 9, Eileen's on a 5.5. So uh, Maria likes doing fine fine uh, quilting with very thin batting underneath with the dual feet instead of having the walking foot on. Eileen as you know does amazing fine fine um, zigzag applique which 
we will be doing next week. Woo -hoo -hoo. So, the main thing to, is to remember if you run a jewel, uh, uh, sorry, a 9mm machine, please, please have in your toolkit a straight stitch plate. One of these. So, you see, you've only got the little hole here. You do not have the normal big slot that will take your uh, zigzag decorative stitches because the needle is going to go sideways. And this came up again yesterday because um, uh, Tim, when Tim was around servicing my machine, he asked me about using the BSR on 9mm machines. And he had a lady who was convinced that her machine wasn't stitching out and she was certain that the tension wasn't right or the timing on her machine with the BSR or with any free motion quilting for that matter on her machine. For me all it was to get her machine to run perfectly was to stick in a really nice fine needle so uh, for me that's an, a size 80 or 70 superior thread needle and also straight stitch plate because if you're only going up and down up and down up and down and really fast up and down then you you don't want that whole slit there because in the minutest amount but it does make a difference as your needle goes into your fabric when you've got the full slit it will pull the fabric down into the feed dogs or down underneath the stitch plate through this big hole that won't happen on a 5.5 it's minimalized big time because it's nearly half the it's nearly half the width but on a straight stitch for fast speed sewing uh, please please Get a straight stitch plate, just ring a dealer, whatever machine you've got, and get one. And I'm telling my machine that I've got it on so that I don't forget it later and switch to zigzag or blanket stitch or something and break my needle because if the needle moves sideways, of course, it's going to hit my stitch plate with this one on. So I'm really going to make an effort now all the time with my machines to do the switch. Um, I just have to be super careful. I, I think I told you I was talking to Tim on the phone the other day and I had the straight stitch plate next to the machine. I got a bit of thread in, I took the plate off, I put it here, I went back up, cleaned it out, put the plate back on, I'd actually picked up the straight stitch plate and I, my machine was not happy and I broke my needle. So, mm-hmm. But yes, please, 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 please. Just, you know, it's going to make such a huge difference. Uh, to you no, and again no matter which machine you've got what are the the FAFs and the Janomis are um they're sevens aren't they they're seven mil wide I think pretty sure they are yes good afternoon Bronwyn and Rose and Jenny James hello Barb how are you good to see you and Margaret's here as well thank you for joining us this afternoon the girls joining the girls I haven't seen the guys come on is James here is Jimmy here John's not here I don't think so. I don't think I missed them. Uh, if I miss John, he'll just message me and tell me. Oh, oh, hi, Kate. Sorry, I missed that you were here. Susan Gray, come on down. I missed you were here. How are things? Uh, Susan is um, from Ocean Grove, Victoria. <laughs> but somehow she got stuck in the UK. She's, she's my bestie at Birmingham, that girl. Goodness me. Right. Let's go. Small stitch. And as I said, please make sure you've got a good matching thread. I'm running black. I suppose there's, I suppose there's a bit here. There's a little bit of black, isn't there? Um, dual feed on. I'm actually running with my 20, mainly so I can see the line that I have drawn because we're sewing straight on the line. When we do kind of all gorgeous frilly flowers and things, I always do say it doesn't matter if you stray from the line a bit because Mother Nature is not perfect and if they're all a little bit different, that's fine. I'm probably going to retract that statement right now because I would love all of these petals to come out the same size. Or the same shape at least. I'm going to cheat. You can see I've left half an inch. Can you see that? I've left about half an inch in between them. I'm going to cheat. I'm not going to finish off my stitch. I'm going to run across there. Like so many different patchwork techniques, 
it's just one of those lovely little things when you do a lot of 3D work is to get this part of the process done. I can draw them up in front of the television or with a cuppa, uh, kitchen table while dinner's cooking. Then I can come into the machine maybe for, you know, 20 minutes or so and just do this step and just get them sewn and then the next part of the process is handwork. Turning them through, pressing, um, turning them into 3D flowers. In this case, we're just going to be turning, pressing, and then setting them into a block. But um, again, it's just, you know, I like it when there's variations in a technique and it requires you to be in different places doing different things. So you've all got dinner organised then, I'm assuming. It's midweek. It's always hard midweek, isn't it? It really is. Um, and what are we doing tonight? Oh, we're having we're having my Vegemite chili con carne, uh, which is a recipe I want to pop for the girls. And we're serving it up with my cornbread recipe, which was on one of the was the first first um, craft and cook show on YouTube. But the recipe cards also on a quilter's life. There you go. That lot's done. One more to go. So I need to do these four. So when I make the cornbread, it takes half a carton of buttermilk. So I have uh, made two, and I'll take one down to my breads. And we'll have it with the roasted tomatoes in the recipe. Just because we'll be too busy sewing and talking. There's no time for cooking. But we do want to be healthy. Um, it's a healthy quilter recipe, so I do want to be healthy, at least for half the time we're there. Okay. I um, filled a basket with my lint chocolates for my Easter display with my Melba <laughs> Christmas dish. Now the Easter dish. And I just walked in the kitchen and, you know, Steve's helping himself. Emma's into them at lunch and I nearly had to go and restock, but I think I've got enough for the photo. But Easter is so late this year. One to go, folks. I'm hoping you all went off and made a coffee. At least with the black you can see my line. Um, Susan, no I'm not. Well, not at the moment coming to, to Festival of Quilts. Um, I, it, the jury's still out. If I come, Suze, um, it'll be to work uh, with, Nat it'll be to work on Natasha's, or just visit and come work with Natasha on, um, what's it called now? It's Craft and Create, or it's Craft, I don't know, the TV channel that keeps changing its name. So we shall see, we shall absolutely see. But yes, yeah, next year I'll be there for a, a month, I would say. That's the plan. A month next year. Um, because then we'll go and do the uh, show in Madrid next year as well. So serious stuff. And Susan, if you didn't know, everyone that watches on Facebook Live is coming to Sitches in, 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 uh, just outside Barcelona. Isn't that right, girls? We're all going. Every time I say it, you all go, she's really serious about us all going. Absolutely. Uh, it was, yeah, what, two weekends ago? One and a half weekends ago, and they had a fantastic show. So, because it doesn't, it just doesn't rain uh, in Sitches, and all of the um, exhibitors, the vendors hall is along the beach in big tents outside. And then at the end of the day, which is quite early because it's Spain, you will go for a walk up through the medieval town and visit the various quilt displays in beautiful old buildings. Oh, come on. So you'll have to meet us there, Suze. I'm just grabbing the starch. I did actually work out how many days it is till we go, and I nearly died because if you say 320 days to go, I actually get quite scared because to me that's actually not a long time to learn Spanish and everything else that I have to do before I go. So 
and you know design fabrics and print them and all that stuff it's not long days are disappearing and 320 is not long at all now we're going to cut these out and I'll have to run and grab the forceps and because we've sewn on the line while they're all still in one strip as you know you can get a really nice scant quarter inch or, or an eighth of an inch and when you get them down this when you get down to about an eighth of an inch and they are curved like this you don't need to use pinking shears they're going to turn through really nicely I think I'll continue sewing um, with the black because then you can see it and I'm quite sure sort of standing back taking the photo you won't be able to see the black more importantly Susan are you coming down here you should be coming this way definitely oh, Fiona says no dinner tonight I'm waiting till to know if my John will come home or not fair enough um, sardo kebabs for Catherine nice homemade fried rice <gasps> 50th birthday oh well congratulations to him wow you're so young Catherine you're so young goodness so young oh no stop i'm not going to talk about him rob's here i can see he's watching did you see that rob's here any minute now he's going to say something and it's going to throw me i was watching natasha the other night and someone made a really really funny comment and i burst out laughing and he's gone what and i said someone's just said something really funny and then i realized it was him and he was sitting a meter from me on the couch Okay, two to go. This is painstaking for you, isn't it? Hopefully you're getting some sewing done. I would, you know, this, this is kind of really full on, pretty Christmassy, festive. And then we've got the pretty spring one as well. But cast your mind, have a think. What about really nice earthy? Uh, batiks really nice earthy batiks I think um, there's a there's a different a whole different look that we could run so if you've got one of those beautiful uh, patent stamped pattern leafy leafy um, or flower stamped batiks for your main fabric where the big triangles are and then you complement it you know even with some really nice sturdy plum purples and some olive greens and things look really really nice i'm leaving you now because i have to go and get the forceps so two seconds i'll just grab one where are you miss jenny is asleep on the stool uh, at the Q20 so I'm assuming she's going to do some quilting for me later on there we go so we'll give these a press I suppose you could say uh, com compared to a normal <laughs> square in a square block there's a little bit of prep to do four slips in keep your thumb on the top then you've got them in the right position to pick up a little bit of the tip and then you can pull over the top we have two sizes on the website they're not under the banner you just put forceps in up the top we've got these and then we've got slightly larger ones with a bit of a curve uh, curved ones are good when you're doing big long things like handles and things and the tips on them are a bit longer with the office clean up I, um, I'm very conscious and guilty of saying I found four pairs of this size amongst all of my stuff and two big ones so there you go so I'm actually going to I will pack them up in my toolbox to take to the soiree now I don't need them for anything there but I just like the idea of having a little bit of everything on hand because you know we're going to spend the day together and you'll be sewing one thing but if you've got questions about other things there's always going to be that opportunity to 
talk and show and tell and a bit of a demo, which will be really nice. The other project for the Saturday, for those that are coming Saturday going, well, what are we going to do Saturday? We are doing a purse. We're doing an Art Nouveau silver glasses case that um, has some reverse applique and uh, some little flowers on it. It's, it's very, very pretty. It's going to be very pretty and, and very, you know, it would look right at home in Melba's boudoir. See how quick this is? Super quick. And not only do I have four petal sides to arrange, they're two-sided, so I've actually got two different ones for orientation to play with. There we are. So you can see what I mean. These have got a bit of grunt because they've got the metallic, but depending on what fabrics you're using, you might like to... Um, can you see that all right? I might, I might do that. Um, you might like to put a little bit of violin inside to give them a bit of oomph. Push him out, and I will hit him with just a just a little bit of starch, so that they sit up. With this stripe, you um, you can kind of get a bit of a feel for what the uh, what a petal would look like if you added in some detail into them. So. Um, you know, if that wasn't a stripe, but you came through and popped on some veins through on these, you can start to get a feel of, of how they would look. If you do, if you do like this idea, and perhaps you'd just like to scale the whole thing up when you've done one, scale the whole. Oh, now I want to do it. I'm thinking about it. Scale the whole thing up and make the one block into a cushion cover. Right, so the whole square is a bit bigger, then you could, your petals are going to get a bit bigger and you can add some 630 pallet into them to give them a bit of body, give them a bit of bounce and then when you come through and embellish with your little stamens and things, they're going to get a real dimension to them, absolute real dimension. Um, now, the other thing, um, I think we are out of stock in the pre-cuts of my little felt packs, my little felt treasure packs, I've only because I've got more out there. I need to uh, I need to cut and pop up on the website. So if you have a stash of um, beautiful felts and you're happy to mix your cotton fabrics or your linen or whatever you've got with felt, you could instead of doing these three D petals. You could just cut your petals from your felt stash because uh, I know I have some felt that needs using up. So instead of bagging out, you could actually use felt or wool blanketing to make your petals up. So there's all our petals done and now we are ready to hit the sewing machine. There is little cut off corners to do, but I'm I'm, I'm wondering whether I actually need to mark them up or whether I'm going to wing it. Probably not, huh? Probably not. Let's just turn over four of these. So I'm pretty sure that's what comes next. Yes, somewhere down the track it does. So I will just turn these over, just four of them. I don't have, I still don't have that little ruler. I should have grabbed it, shouldn't I, when I went next door. It's all right. We'll do this. You all know you should be using your creative grids right now. Or your small ruler. You all know that. Two. I really am working blind. I haven't made this for well over a year. So... I am literally reading the pattern as we go for once. It's not in my head. So, oh, scary. What the pattern tells me to do is take one of my middle ones here, my flower center, and we're going to pop one of the 3D petals on the top. So let's have a look at this. 
we want, we want, we want our plain ones to be, oh look at the sun, you've got a bit of speckly sun now on the straight sides of our square and then we're going to be setting on point the, straight, uh, the stripe ones. So we're popping on our plain ones first. So I need to align and centre my petal. And I want you to do this carefully for me please, not by eye like I am at the moment. Pop that over the top and then we take one of our little sashing pieces here that we cut before and we sandwich it in between. Here's where you'll make a personal preference over whether you're going to use pins or you're going to use your little clippies. I'm going to use Wonder Clips. All of my Wonder Clips are now mixed up. I did start off with them all in different sizes. And yeah. So we'll pop those together like that, okay, with a little bit of sun speckle. And then we are going to go through and do the same on the other side. So I reckon I reckon I can do it just to save us some save us a little bit of demo time. I'll pop the one on the other side as well. Okay. Oh, he's a bit crooked. See, you really, please, please be careful. Make sure or you check everything is nice and straight. And I'm sort of, I could go to town with pins or anything here, but I'm just popping my Wonder Clips on where I know it's holding each side of the petal. When I've got these two on, I know what happens next. These two are going to go on the other side of that center square and that's where these two longer pieces are going to come in. So we'll take all of these over to the sewing machine and we'll get these sewn up. There we go. Right here. Right. I don't... Oh, actually, I might... Sorry guys, I'm going to switch over to my 97D, just so I've got my nice um, accurate quarter inch with the jewel feet on. Okay, what, 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 oh, see it's not so embarrassing now if I make a mistake while I'm technically not a banana dealer. <laughs> Oh, and you know, I haven't got the stylist on the machine or anything, it's fine because I'm not trying to make a good imp I am trying to make a good impression, but I'm not contractually trying to make a good impression. Okay, here we go. I'm starting stitch at start. And off we go. So I'll take my little pegs, my little clippies out as we go. And it's all sitting there nice. Oh, what? What, what, what? I upset you, I'm so sorry. Okay. I have a bit of extra thread on there, mate. Oh, I did too. Okay. Let's go to the other side. Put this one in. I might just take the pegs out, hey? There we go. Actually, what I'm going to do... I'm going to turn off my securing stitch. I do, uh, I do find when you've, and I've sort of got bulk and everything going on, and there's a lot happening here, and I'm on little pieces, and I don't, I just don't need that finishing stitch. Sorry, my starting stitch, because I'm going to come back across that seam later. So we'll take that off. Of course, I'm just doing one block and you'll be able to line up and do all three at the same time. Right, so there you go, there's our two our two petals either side. I'll turn around that way for you. Ta da! Alright, now I'm going back the other way. I'm going to finger press this because it's just a little piece. Uh, you know me, if I'm not happy with it later, I will come and redo it under the cloak of darkness when you're not looking. Now in the instructions, it will tell you, but I'm going to tell you here now as well, you need to be really careful 
that when you come through with this next seam, when we're putting on these ones, that you don't catch your first petals into the seam. So I just grab a pin and I pin these guys. They're, like, they're bunny ears, aren't they? They're absolute bunny ears out of the way. Like that. And now I can pop this one on across here and they're not going to get caught in the seam. So if you decide to make big frilly fat petals, uh, just keep that in mind as well because you'll need to be super careful. Someone did say to me the other day, your um, machine sounds noisier today. I'd actually switched machines. There is a difference in the sound that a dual feed 9mm machine makes compared to a 5mm because of the because you've got this extra mechanism and everything going on a little bit like when you uh, put your walking foot on is the best the best comparison okay so now we've got this one on all right so we can pop across to the other side so it really it's not even I don't know it's not even like foundation piecing it is just sewing together a simple square and then little cut off triangle block but, um, oh no, I've lost a bit. Hang on. But in, at the same time, you're setting in some, um, got it. You're setting in some petals. So it's a really simple piece to block. If you, you know, get a piece of paper, draw it up and have a look at what it looks like without the 3D in. And you'll go, oh, it's a really simple little block. It's a square with sashing with cut off corners, um, but we're just adding all this fun, all this 3D fun in, in between. Okay, here's where I want him, and put this one over the top. Right. So we'll head over to the iron. We should give this a little bit of an iron at this stage, just so it's all sitting nice and flat before we do the next step. So I'll pop this down here. We definitely have autumn speckle sun now. Lovely. Right, so they both went that way. So if you have a look at the back, both those seams came inwards. That was a natural way for them to go because of the thickness of the petals that are in there. So I'll stick with that. I'm going to iron these in the same direction, inwards. Oh no, Miggy Moo! She's getting out the rat test. She's getting it out. Oh, Meg. I'll send you the... Um, I shall send you the rat list later. The Lisa Chandler True and Trade. Once I stop playing COVID, we'll put house back on market. Yes, please, Susan. We want you here. Australia misses you. You need to come home. Ocean Grove has not been the same without you. You need to come home so we can play together here. Happy with that? Okay. So next step. Do you remember how I drew on those little cut off corners, squares? These are now going to go on here. Ho, ho. So we need to now fold these out of the way. So I'll grab the pins. Look, as I said the other day, happiness is when all of both of my thimbles are in the same place at the same time and I know where they are. Did you see that overhead flicker? That means I've been going a long time, doesn't it? Whoops. Okay, see this here? This is going to go across and we're going to have the petal underneath. Right, figure F, centre, what am I doing? Uh, mark the centre of the two adjoining sides. I knew that. So we need to mark this. This is four and a half. I need to mark at two and a quarter. And this way, 
two and a quarter. So at the moment, this whole width here is four and a half, and I need to mark the center. And then I would get a ruler if I had one. Cheap as I should have gone and get one. We're going to go around, we're going to do the whole lot. What we do with this is we sit the, the stripy petals a quarter of an inch over this line, okay? So, do you like the way Lisa Chandler is doing the universal eyeball of a halfway? There we go. So if you decide to scale this up, it doesn't matter, really. Um, it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter what size you end up, you're always going to be marking in the center. Let's get these guys out of the way, get these bunnies out of the way. Grab one of these and we're going to sit him a quarter of an inch over because I need the edge of the petal to be taken into the seam. We pop our square on here that's got the line already drawn on it and it's all magical because it matches up with the lines that I have drawn on the block. I'm going to pop a couple of pins in. I need to run pins now of course because we're going right over the top. If you are running a quarter inch foot that has a, uh, a guide on the edge of it, unless it's a banana one with a hinge, you're going to want to get rid of that now because I'd go back to a straight stitch foot because we need to run straight across here. I was just trying to see if I could pop the one on the other side and it's not going to. So we'll take all this with us back to the machine. Pop it in here. Oh no, Barb, you've misplaced your... You know what, I've misplaced those new glasses again too. It was a silly idea to buy glasses with no frames on them because I can never find them. They're here somewhere. Never mind. Actually, you know, they could very well be in the car. Right, we're going to run straight across this line. Okay, so... You can hear me, I'm going over my pins. Uh, you can take them out of the go if you want. I do love my clover piecing pins because they're super fine. Okay, so that's that side. I'm going to whiz straight across. Oh, girls, I've done them round the wrong way. Oh, I've done them round the wrong way. I've done them round the wrong way. Have I? I have. Oh, that is so annoying. I should have put down the other ones first. Right, well, I'm going to finish this one off. Okay, you need to put down your printed ones first. And it probably says that in the pattern. I've skipped over it. What a numbnut very universal technical term for someone that doesn't read the pattern properly. Okay, that sits over the line. So I'll be coming back and uh, redoing this block. But you know, that's my job, right? And um, you will see it in the pattern. In fact, I swear, I, in my head now, I can... I can Hear the line that I have written, if that makes sense, that says to put down the other ones first. Oh, well. How would I save myself now? How would I redeem myself? I know what I'd do. I'd say, because, because I'm going to make, you know, come back and make a little miniature fabric basket in the stripe to sit in the centre. So that that's why I didn't put them on the middle, so it all contrasts. It'll be some stupid line like that. You know what, I think I think the seven the old five seventeen does actually sound a bit noisy. It's gonna need an oil. Okay, so that one's on too. Let's come back over here. Dum dum dum. What how how did I manage to do that? I just Oh you know why? And it's not an excuse, I should have read the pattern. It's because the block sits on the point on it on the table runner. 
So what I was looking at thinking was uh, the straight sides was actually the angled sides. Trap for young players, as Tim would say, and something I shall pass on to Natasha before she does it. So chop those off. Ta -da. So I've got two to go. So you've got the hang of it now. I'll, do you want, I'll put these on and then I'm going to uh, leave you because I'll need to unpick this. And um, I'll put these on. And, uh, and then I'll leave you and go and unpick and finish it off. So, uh, what else do I have to say before we wrap up today? We need to, what do we need to do? Oh yes, if you're booking a soiree, super duper. Uh, I'm so sorry if you're interested and you can't come. Uh, if you are up northern Victoria, well, if Meg, if you've got COVID, I'm pretty happy you've got it now because then chances are you won't have it when we bring the soiree up country. Which I think is late June. The plan is late June, but that is um, still to be negotiated and worked out. Um, but that is the plan. Uh, so, yes, we. sorry if you can't come, but if you are coming, please make sure you book super soon just so that we can make sure that everyone is sitting where they want to, with who they want to, um, that we've got enough kits, we've got enough yummy food for the high tea. So much needs to be planned a long way ahead. As you know, I'm in charge of table decorations. So please do book soon, just so we, we know. We know that you're coming. Um, and we can be prepared for those that can't come, yeah, I'll be chatting with Margaret this week of options for um, kits. Sorry, if you're not coming, if you're coming on one day, not both. We will be talking through all of that um, this week because uh, logistically, um, you know, we know how many our maximum is per day in the hall, and that's the amount of kits that I'm actually packing. But if you're coming one day and you want one from the other day, it changes dramatically the number. So we've just got to work through that. We, um, yeah, we think about it. And also, also remember the patterns, you know, the patterns are quite different if they're for people that perhaps need a bit of guidance on the day, which is fine, or you're doing it independently at home. It kind of changes the way we word things. So that's why people have said, can I just have the kit? And I've had to say, I'm really sorry. They are really being designed for a hands-on workshop at the moment over this side and we'll trim his excess off. So what am I going to use this one for? Am I right folks? I'm going to make something to sit in the middle of this one. Uh, maybe I'll just finish the block off and it will be its own little um, separate placemat to match. I could <laughs> I could sit my red pot plant on it. Oh dear. Okay. I'll redeem myself with you. You'll see. Actually, look, come on, it doesn't look, it, it just doesn't look that bad, actually. Let me just iron it, and I'll hold it up for you. So after this step is where it will get very dramatic, because um, I'll be adding in the black background to go around it. Just have to do. Be mindful. So we've done that. Be mindful. Under control. But if you haven't made up your mind yet, if you're going to do it, I did mention. Um, was it yesterday? I popped in, didn't I, from the cutting room? That's right. I, I did sort of fess up yesterday. It's getting a bit tight, and Steve's keeping tabs on it all the way through. Literally, there are, are spreadsheets, and make sure, okay, we've got this much of this fabric. We need this much per kit. We need these many different bits of it to go in four or five different block of the month packs. All of that's being worked out and literally by the minute. Um, and I said, I think I said yesterday, we only had room for about four or five more. I um, That was to do with the background fabric. We have some Q and some more, but based on the emails I'm seeing going back and forth today, that's kind of nearly over as well. Also, we, we, you know, we're committing, particularly to those that are doing it as a block of the month, we're committing to a journey with you for 12 months and we need to be super sure that everything that you need is actually in the door 
for 12 months before we send your first pack out. So even just based on that, um, I said to Steve this morning, you, we just have to make our mind up how many we think we can commit to, how long it's going to take every month, and just and, and put a cap on it. So I don't think we'll go through till the 14th. Uh, in taking bookings, I really do think we're probably going to cap it before then. What's today? The 5th. Yet the rate we're going at the moment will probably stop memberships about the 10th. So if you do one in police, that's the panic sell, but it's true. We, we don't want to get halfway through and go, I'm oh, sorry, we can't get that fabric anymore. Everything has to be the same in everyone's kits and it has to match the quilt. So, um, yeah, we are nearly, we're nearly there. And I'm done with this. I'm over it? No. Um, have a look at that. And I'm just going to go and shut the curtain that is, or the blind, I should say, that's causing the speckles so that you can see it a little bit better. Blind number one. Oh, that did it, didn't it? I got rid of it. There you go. And that's the change in the seasons. Right, so around this, just like we did the sashing pieces at the start, the same thing will happen now. See what I mean? See, I was looking at it like that, but when it sits in the table runner, it's like that. So that's where I got confused over which one to put down first. Now we go around, so this is where the black will come in. So straight piecing, just sashing, same deal, make sure your petals aren't going to get caught. Uh, he's not the right length, of course, because these two will sew in. So that's black, 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 black. Oh, happy with that. Just big candle. You know, a nice big fat candle on a little pedestal in the middle. And then that's going to, my green's going to give me my little bit of pop. And you can see, see the little sneaky sneaky having a peek over here. So you can see you've got really nice little diagrams that describe it all. Probably a lot better than what I've done today. Um, but they will, they will definitely uh, help you along the way with the visual. There you go. So that's like that. And then this is what's going to be on the sides. Made that that way. Like that. So there you go. So you've got a few options. Um, you can run away, absolutely run away, and grab the digital download now, print it out, get into that stash tonight. After you've worked out what's for dinner, please. I don't want to be responsible for anyone grumpy in your house um, not being fed because you're up to your neck in fabric in the sewing cupboard. So you can do that. Uh, you, there is one, one, I think one, of these kits left at the moment up on the website. If you love this, grab it. Uh, and I will have more. So I will, I'll get Steve... Uh, is that right? No. What you can do, once it's run out, what you can do is you can ask to be notified when they're back in stock. So as soon as they're back in stock, I'll be able to put them up. Now, of of that fabric, you don't need you don't need that much. I'm just wondering if I can do something naughty when the production samples get here. No. I was just thinking I could steal some. I might be able to do four or five, and then when the full stock comes in, because I get five metres from Japan at the moment coming in, I've got it coming in, to check the fabric, and then we've got all these things we need to make up, but I might be able to steal a bit. Anyway, you can always pop your name down of when they're back in stock, and then this one I will get finished off, uh, and as soon as it's ready, you'll see it come through in a newsletter, I'll, I'll pop it on Facebook. But I think, I think colour-wise, it you know, it'd be really dramatic. Um, so yes, please have a look. There's also the Fat Quarter Pack. Now, if there's anything else you need, you know you can email us. And I might not get back to you within five minutes, but I usually get back to you within a day. And um, we take it all on board and help you out wherever we can. This was the 
it's not. Oh, it is a pattern on Craft and Cook, though, isn't it? It is. It is. Yes, it is. So if you're a craft, if you're a um, not a craft or cook, if you are a Quilters Life member, I think you've got it there. Is that right? I think it is. I will double check to see if it's up there. Uh, and if it's not, it, I'll make sure it goes up. Okay, on a Quilters Life, so that you don't need to buy it. Ten dollars a month for a Quilters Life. Did you all know what it is? You do? Just checking. Just checking. Ten dollars a month. Free patterns, free patterns, free patterns, okay? And demonstrations and stuff, and recipes and stuff, all there. So you can hop on and have a look. There's a couple of little examples that you can um, have a look at first without having to sign up, and you can sign up, you can cancel any time. I will say we are going to have a little bit of a clean out soon, but I'll give you plenty of warnings for that to make sure you've downloaded everything. After nearly a year and a half we're going to go back and start pulling some things down just so that it's just a bit of a clean out bit of housekeeping from way back at the start but I will let you know before then uh, just so it's fair for everyone right are we all good I think we are um, I just want to check in case any of you need me before we go um, I would like a kit from the Sunday from all you lovely ladies. What are you talking? All right, so uh, we've done that. Uh, Megan's watching later. Megan, you take care of yourself, please. Absolutely, Marie. Thank you very much. Toast for dinner, Fiona. John not coming home. Oh, French toast? Scrambled eggs on toast. Something on toast. Yeah, I'm a bit too human sometimes, Fiona. Oh, hello Yolanda. Thank you for joining us. How are things up your end of the world? Thank you for joining us. Um, Sunday was great fun and uh, we'll, we'll be back with more stuff on this Sunday. Let me know, Fiona, email me which kit you're talking about. That's absolutely fine. Hello Pauline Boyke. And here Petra popped in too. Super. All right, I'm going to chuff. Loads to do. Thank you very, very, very much for joining me this afternoon. I will pop up. Oh, my computer died. I shall pop up uh, the time for Sunday. I don't know about you, but I'm loving the 10 a.m. Sunday slot. It just, I get up, I'm excited. It gives me all of Saturday to get it ready. Um, so for Sunday, I want you to think landscapes, ombres, it's very very yummy so we'll be back I'll be back with those um Steve will be in the building and Rob will be in the building on Sunday as well and then next Tuesday yes it's all planned uh, next Tuesday it's just me or is it going to be Wednesday I think it's Wednesday I should stop saying Tuesday it's just habit Wednesday next week we are um, playing we've got Sally Kelly arriving if you don't know what Sally Kelly fabric is <laughs> That's fine because either did I um, until uh, a mate in the UK told me all about her amazing stuff. So it's really, really gorgeous. It's fresh. It's like funky liberty and it goes with all of our solids collections. So that's what we'll be doing. Um, I have to go play with the internet now. <laughs> it's not working. So I'll go and do that. So you might, you know, there'll be just a screen with nothing happening for uh, a minute or two so you can have a look at screen and ponder what you would like the afternoon all right everyone thank you very much all right i'll see you sunday morning if not before at margaret's okay bye